Hello, Jordan Nordarse from Boyish Denim, the founder and creative director. Thank you for joining us today for the next uh, episode in the series for Navina's Generosity Talks. How are pleasure. you? It's a pleasure to be here um, across the camera. Yeah. Um, I'm doing well. I'm just, uh, to be honest with you, it's a sort of odd blessing in disguise to be able to spend this much time at home because I work so much and I travel so much. So um, it's been nice to stay home, take care of my plants and, uh, you know, catch up on some reading and, you know, look at life in a different light. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. I've been very fortunate to have a unique career in sort of mid-sized, small to mid-sized brands. Uh, never got caught up in the corporate world. And, um, you know, I was always very fascinated with learning as much as I can. And I think naturally with any sort of education, it becomes somewhat philosophical in a way that you question your involvement in it and, um, and where, you're, where you want to go with it. And so it was never like a point in my life where I was like, oh, I want to do sustainable, you know, manufacturing and, and clothing, you know, let alone jeans and specifically with women's. It was just something that kind of you start to figure out what you're good at and you just go for it. And then sooner or later, you just don't even give a shit about what you're good at. And you just do whatever you want. <laughs> and I guess that's just kind of where I ended up was uh, it was more about just trying to challenge uh, the conventional methods of how people were viewing um, clothing in their closet, considering the impact I had learned uh, about what went through the process of making garments and how much time people actually utilize these garments nowadays, which has become less and less. So to me, it felt like all this hard work of everyone that I see behind this, this massive supply chain, is just considered almost single use trash to people. Mm -hmm. Wear once, throw away you know, wear a couple times and, you know, donate. So to me, you know, even though I believe secondhand has a lot of use to it, naturally the supply chain of just even a secondhand garment had to start from somewhere. So to me, it's always been the uniqueness of discovering where things come from and how they're made and, and then adding your own little touch to it and what you can do to maybe make it your own way. And no matter how you do that, I think uh, it's important to, work with others and communicate with others what, what's going on, what you're doing, how you're improving things. And it becomes sort of a shared method of collaboration, which is something that this industry is very, very used to is collaborations. However, most people look at it as design collaborations and think, well, that's not sustainable collaborations. That's just design collaborations. But the funny thing is, is, is sustainability really starts with design. You design your supply chain, you design your products, you design your inspiration, all that comes from a, a, a mentality of, you know, a mixture of your head and your heart working together to figure out where you want to go with it. And, you know, why not just apply it to methods and then collaborate that information with each other across the supply chain so that everybody can be doing things better. The thing about becoming if you want to put titles to things, if you want to consider yourself a sustainable brand, you're not going to be afraid of others copying you. You're not going to be afraid of being called a greenwasher. And you're most certainly not going to be afraid of making mistakes mm. because without making mistakes, you cannot be breaking any new sort of ground on making anything better. The only way to really make things better is to try. And oftentimes, you know, probably 90% of the time, trying requires failing. And, um, and that's the uniqueness about sustainability is sustainability people think is, oh, it's better this, you know, it's perfection. It's, it's not, you're not 100% sustainable. You're not even close to that. And it reminds me of, you know, I'm very much a history buff too. And so I look back at like a specific period in, in, in history of like, um, you know, pretty much from 1910 to 1950. Um, and, you know, I think of like Winston Churchill, you know, somebody who had to endure, you know, several world wars and, you know, like how does somebody like that, that's constantly being, you know, literally and metaphorically bombarded, um, you know, with, with failure. And it's funny because there's actually a quote from him that said that, you know, success is not final and that uh, failure is not fatal. 
And it's the courage to continue that really counts because um, success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. And the unique part about that quote that I really like the most is it kind of goes in play a lot with where we are right now with a lot of people utilizing this period in time to accept failure and no different than myself too as, as I go through hardships currently right now with canceled orders you know um, figuring out how to support uh, staff and, and everything like that um, along with paying back loans and, and everything like that from being a startup um, and enthusiasm is the real key because there's always going to be failures especially if you look back into time you know you have thousands and thousands of years ago, the same mentality is the same now. If you look at Buddhism, it's life is suffering. Life has obstacles and, and challenges and that you're always gonna be trying to figure out how to get around them. And it's not that these challenges for, for what you view people as being successful and that they don't have the same challenges. They, no, they might have different challenges, but everybody has them. And the thing is, is when you, stop to, when you start to view them as challenges instead of obstacles and detriments in your life, you become stronger. You know, As they say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So this unique point that we are in right now is really a definition of, of making people stronger and challenging them, challenging them towards the future. So well said, so well said and very inspiring. And when you were saying that quote, I got chill bumps. Um, and <laughs> it's easier said than done. Let me just say that. You know, it's like, you gotta imagine that is, you're all gonna have bad days. Like, allow yourself to have a bad day of negative thinking, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, but wake up the next day fresh, do what you can, keep your mind positive, continuously look at things and, and understand that, you know, like failure is a necessary point in order to succeed. Absolutely, the winners have lost multiple times before they won. And the, the challenge is picking yourself back up and brushing yourself off and moving forward and no better time than now you know even though we we none of us can really see the light at the end of the tunnel yet you know those quotes or those mantras anything to keep you know something to hold in our hand while we're mm -hmm. trying to survive mm -hmm. and thrive This is gonna be a unique time for a lot of people to really rediscover not just how they, the culture is involved with their companies, but the culture across their supply chain to both vendors, mills, factories, suppliers, boutiques, department stores, online vendors, dropship vendors, their own personal you know, uh, direct consumer business and all that. This is a time to reflect, to, to understand that life is about balance. And that even though things produce money or profit doesn't mean that it's necessarily balanced and trying to figure out what that balance is, is sort of like the supply and demand sort of graph when you look at things and that point where they meet in the middle, that is equilibrium. And the thing is, you're never going to always hit equilibrium. There's that's, that's a, you know, way too difficult to always get to that point. And even if you do get to that point, it goes back to the Winston Churchill thing where, you know, like success, success is uh, not really, going to be something that's going to stay around all the time because it's always evolving and um, that's why you kind of got to create a road and roads move but the thing is if you build the road you know what to stay within and right now in these trying times a lot of people haven't really figured out how to evolve and the road has gotten too wide and they're just there's too many off ramps and everyone's all over the place mm -hmm. and they're struggling to figure that out and then all of a sudden this hit and they're like, oh God, this is gonna be the end of us. But really it's not the end. It's just the start of a new beginning of how to look at things in a different light, how to maybe consider this um, a time to reflect your successes and your failures. And uh, so, because you know, insanity is, is trying the same thing but expecting different results. And oftentimes because you're just running, running, running all the time, you don't really have time to stop and reflect and figure out what, what where am I necessarily being insane? You know, like what, what, did, what am I constantly doing the same, 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 but expecting different results? And, and you know, that sometimes takes outside light, you know, a different person, different department, different company, a consultant, whatever to find it. But a lot of the times it just takes somebody either smoking a lot of weed 
or just sitting down and, and, and having time to, to de-stress and, and to reflect and, and, and to consider things. And that's our sort of wildfire that we want. We want the, the business of social interaction between each other, this collaboration between the consumer and the rest of, of, of every supply chain to work together. And through that collaboration is how I think uh, the way of the future is gonna come. I think it's important for us all to figure out what we can give to each other versus what we can take from each other. And that's what we don't feel. We don't feel like we're taking people's money because we give so much of it away in what we do. Um, we feel like we're just circulating it, which is a balanced figure. Uh, going back to what I was talking about before, uh, we're just trying to figure out what that balance is. The balance of supporting our supply chain, the balance of also making money, and the balance of also giving an appropriately priced product to um, our consumers. You know, our jeans are not cheap, um, but they're not expensive. And they're at the same quality, if not better, than the expensive stuff. So what we try to do is bring some sort of evolution to pricing, evolution to social, um, giving back, uh, sustainability, circularity, advertise. When we talk about products, when we do things, is focus on the good light, focus on what we're doing, and collaborate that information by telling people how we are doing it so other brands can also do it themselves. This isn't for us to do it by ourselves. This is for everyone to hopefully learn and, and for this to eventually become the new normal. Now, most millennials and even you know the young Z generation are gonna see now two recessions in our lives, our lifetimes which are challenges and obstacles that are gonna be making us stronger, that we're gonna utilize and understand that there is no such thing as perfection. There is no such thing as others will decide for me. This is a time where people need to learn to vote, but it's not just about voting, but reading policies like people used to do back in the day, not just looking at Instagram and allowing people to tell. And that's, I suppose, what we try to do through even our Instagram is it's not about telling people what to do. It's just giving them the options, let them know, explore. My whole goal is less is more. So I've always been trying to figure out how do I make a gene that can last forever? But even when it's done, we can make a new gene out of it or do something with it. And this whole sort of mentality of, you know, it took me a long time to figure out what's the difference between like downcycling, recycling, and upcycling. And it's actually kind of funny because for a long time, I just thought, oh, recycling and upcycling, it's just like the same sort of mentality, but people are using it differently. You know, you're like you're taking something and turning it into an, like a new yarn, you know, because I work in fashion, so that's what I was thinking about. And uh, I'm part of the textile exchange, and, and there was a gentleman that actually, actually explained it very well. And uh, he had said that, uh, think of recycling as a, as a parallel. You take a can and you make a can. You know, uh, and, and I thought that that was very interesting, you know, because in fashion, we think of recycling as much, if you do anything with it as recycling. And, um, you know, and a lot of people, what they're doing is they're taking things and recycling, it's calling it recycling and then recycling it into things that are even worse, you know, by taking recycled plastic water bottles and turning them into yarns that now, you know, shed microplastics, mm -hmm. which is an even worse situation than we were even in before. You can pick up a, a water bottle with your hands, but you can't pick up microplastics, especially when they're in the hundreds of millions, you know, per products sometimes in their life cycles. And so um, this future is going to hold a lot of people becoming more intelligent to these perceptions of what people say is good. And they're not going to be able to be marketed towards and say, oh, we're doing this so it's sustainable. People are going to be like, well, you know what? I actually read a report that says that that's not, so that's bullshit. We're calling you out on it. Let's hope that maybe that's what comes out of this is more people getting involved in, in sciences, more people getting involved in researching, you know, uh, environmental journalism, um, you know, corporate whistleblowing journalism, whatever it is that to help make this world better, it's going to require all of us banding together because at the end of the day, the people that all have the money are 1% of the population and we're the other 99%. And that goes down to products, that goes down to, to financial institutions, they give out the money, mortgages, everything. And, you know, we are the ones that have the power. We're just not utilizing it. Our world has been doing these unique things, these balanced systems. We're destroying that system. 
And it's because there's too many people all there and everyone's working against each other. And this is why I talk a lot about this collaboration is because if people collaborated more, shared information, helped each other, be more efficient, mm -hmm. figure out value and things like that and products, then people would understand. Stores wouldn't be like, oh, I'm gonna cancel this. Like, no, because it's like, I don't have anything else to fill this because nobody else has a bunch of just shit laying around. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're just like, oh, I can get something else from somebody else, it's fine. It's, everything's so indispensable. People even now are becoming in indispensable. And that's the real, that's the real uh, directive that I'm hoping people end up going towards is understanding we need to do this together. Um, but also understanding that together doesn't mean that we're all going to have the same mentality or the same ideology or that we're going to like the same things. You're not. That's the uniqueness of humans. Um, but we can figure out how to cohabitate together. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter whether you like tight jeans or loose jeans or stretchy jeans or rigid jeans. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that ultimately, what does it do for you? How does it interact in society? What does it do for the earth that gives us the life that we have? And, um, and you know, how does it circulate the rest of the economy and, and good to the people that need help? Uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation finally came out with a guideline, the first of any kind for denim, which is called uh, the Jeans Redesign Project, which is there to create guidelines to help people be able to make better jeans that are better for the world and that are also able to divert from the landfills to be utilized once again to be made into new jeans. And, uh, and that's the future of things is people need to start looking at things as trash. You know, like so many people, I mean, the, one of the wealthiest women in China is someone that figured out, why are everybody sending me all this trash? I can do something with it. You know, one human's trash is another human's treasure. Mm. And, you know, everyone has a different perception of what they consider treasure, which is really just the imagination and heart of somebody behind them and how far they can look into something to what they can turn it into. Don't, you know, like that's why we have to learn what value is. And value is, 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 is time, is effort, is, is love, is compassion. There's a lot of things that people need to, to put in there. These are things that you can't put monetary value to. And that's the problem with our world nowadays is it's become digital currency that becomes all, if there's no direct correlation to value, there is no value. But that's wrong. And, uh, you know, in this realm of people singing on patios, of, of people dancing in hospitals on their off time, you know, this is a compassion that's coming together for the world that I'm hoping that what people do with this compassion is they extend it into other things in the world, into products, you know, jeans, clothing, uh, cars, more electric cars. How do we figure out a way to produce electricity more efficiently? I'm, I'm hoping this wakes everybody up because everybody needs to be woken. Everyone's asleep. They're caught up in this vicious cycle of spending money on things they don't need, supporting giant companies that they don't need to be supporting. They need to balance things out. Mm -hmm. you know, they, need to, they need to do their own research. They can't be marketed towards and say, hey, this is organic. You should buy it. They're like, okay. Mm -hmm. There's no certification behind it. There's no proof that they're actually doing things correctly. Because nobody really understands them. It's, it's, to be honest, with you, it's boring you know, to some people. They think, that's boring. I just want to play video games. Just want to buy uh, processed foods that last forever, but don't want to wonder what's actually inside of it. And all those weird sort of ingredients are that have acronyms that they don't even spell out, which I don't know if that's even legal. Is that even legal? They can all do it. They get away with it. Because people are going to realize it's not about quantity or quality. How many wars have there been fought where there's like, there was 25 of them against 25,000. They somehow still managed to fight them off. It's like, yeah, because it's not about how many you have. It's about the quality of what you have. And when you have a quality product that can last a long time and that when it's done, when you're done with it, you, you know responsibly that you could do something with it, that you know it's going to go to a good place, be turned into something that's not going to end up in the world where it's going to damage it. And in the process of making it didn't damage things, that's what people are going to want. Thank you for what you do and um, educating the world. And we're going to emerge from this stronger and better. 
uh, people, as individuals, I think, as a country, and as a world. We're so connected. We realize that now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very connected. And, it's, and that's the future, is it, you know, we're going to see what's going to happen with everybody connecting more together and dropping their guards with racism and things like that that are completely unnecessary, uh, wastes of people's energy and time and, and lives and stuff like that. And we're going to open up the fact that this is, this is no more anybody's fault besides ourselves, you know, and uh, that's the real discovery of, a, of us all waking up, you know, um, and uh, I think it was Plato's allegory of a cave talks about people waking up and that was 2000 years ago, over 2000 years ago. And that's, that's the unique thing is that something that can happen now yet somebody can talk about it thousands of years ago is only proof that we are humans and we are insane because we continuously make the wrong mistakes over and over again. But we, the same sort of thing we're doing, we're expecting different results for. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a time in which we all just need to wake up and realize, all right, let's just stop this insanity and, and focus on making the future better for not just ourselves, but for the everyone on the planet, animals, ecosystems, everything. Well, Plato also said that storytellers will rule the world. And you hoping. are a storyteller. Thank so you. I'm trying to just tell what I'm doing. I'm hoping that the stories that are being told are true stories and not greenwashing stories. Um, but thank you. I know I'm a, you know, our friendship over the years is what's led me to be who I am, you know, along with other many uh, people. And, and that's the thing is the collaboration I've had with everybody that's taught me what I have is the reason why I, where I am now. And, uh, and everybody needs to understand that the more they collaborate together, the more successful they will become and the more educated they will help each other become. And, uh, and that's teamwork. And, you know, teamwork is, as they say, dream work. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you having uh, taken the time to listen to me rant uh, philosophically uh, for whatever it is that I have to say on my weird quotes and history things and whatever. And I, as, yeah, I do believe it can go on forever. <laughs> and I love that about you. I do.